A couple of episodes back, we were looking at Jesus' return and we spent some time focusing on this verse from Matthew 24. In this verse, Jesus himself is talking about the time of his second coming and he says, however, no one knows the day or the hour when these things will happen, not even the angels in heaven or the son himself, only the father knows. I knew there would be some kind of controversy over this. Even as I was making that video last year, I just saw the messages in my mind. And sure enough, a lot of comments and messages came in on that video saying, you see, this proves that Jesus isn't God and didn't claim to be God. God's omniscient, God knows everything. So if Jesus was God, he would know this. He would know the time of his return. The fact that he didn't proves that Jesus wasn't God and didn't claim to be God. Now, we actually looked at this question in the last season of Answers videos. We did one back then called, Did Jesus Claim to Be God? But even last year, I had quite a few emails from people saying, we've just discovered the Fuel Project or we like the Fuel Project's videos as a whole, but you're wrong on that idea of Jesus being God. Some people think that this was a later invention that isn't found in the Bible itself. So as we go back over this topic, this video is entitled, Did Jesus Really Claim to Be God? Let's take a look. First of all, we should say that the Bible as a whole certainly claims that Jesus was God. The idea that this was a later invention or that the concept doesn't exist within the Bible itself is very easy to refute. John writes, in the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him and nothing was created except through him. The word gave life to everything that was created and his life brought light to everyone. If we're left in any doubt that the word being referred to in this passage is indeed Jesus Christ, John then clarifies. So the word became flesh or human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness and we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. The Bible clearly states that the word, the Logos, the Son of God who took on human flesh, who came to dwell among us, was God. Jesus was God in human form. If anyone would claim to be a Bible-believing Christian and that they believe the whole of the Bible, then denying the deity of Jesus just isn't an option here. The disciples believed that Jesus was God. Jesus asked the disciples who they thought he was and Simon Peter replied, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Now Jesus didn't rebuke Peter for saying this. Instead, he affirmed his declaration by saying, you are blessed Simon, son of John, because my father in heaven has revealed this to you. You did not learn this from any human being. Now it's fair to say the disciples took a while to reach this conclusion. They were on a journey of discovery over three years as they followed Jesus and they actually learned quite slowly Jesus' identity. At various times in the Gospels and at various stages of Jesus' ministry, the disciples thought different things about Jesus. They expressed different ideas about who he was. They were learning slowly day by day. It was only after the resurrection really that the scales fully fell from their eyes and they fully understood with certainty who Jesus was. It was the resurrection that caused them to start proclaiming bold to the world, on pain of death even, that Jesus was indeed God. Remember, after the resurrection, Jesus appeared to Thomas and after touching his wounds and putting his hands on his side, Thomas exclaimed clearly to Jesus, my Lord and my God. And what was Jesus' reply to this? Did Jesus rebuke him for saying this? Did he say to Thomas, actually, no, Thomas, that's blasphemy. I'm not God. No, Jesus affirmed him in that statement that he was God. Jesus said, you believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. With this sentence, Jesus is inviting us, the reader, to join with Thomas in that declaration, to join with Thomas in the belief that Jesus is Lord and God. So, the Bible clearly declares that Jesus is God. The disciples declare that Jesus is God. And when they do, Jesus affirms them in those declarations. But does Jesus himself actually say it with his own lips? Yeah. The ancient name for God revealed to Moses at the burning bush was I am. At the burning bush, Moses asked for God's name and God replied, I am, I am who I am. Say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. This is one of the most ancient and holy names by which Jews knew God. Now Jesus comes along centuries later into Jewish society and starts talking weirdly about how he existed not only before Moses but even before Abraham. The people are very perplexed and puzzled by this and said, you aren't even 50 years old, how can you say that you've seen Abraham? Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, before Abraham was even born, I am. 
The bombshell that statement would have caused in ancient Israel can be lost on us slightly today, but it can't be overstated. Jesus was claiming the ancient and holy name of God for himself. I am. He was claiming to be the eternal one, the uncaused one, the Alpha and the Omega, the one who had revealed himself to Moses at the burning bush. Which is why the people immediately picked up stones to try to stone him to death for blasphemy. Jesus had just claimed to be God. I am telling you the truth. Before Abraham was born. Jesus made this claim a second time. When he's before the Sanhedrin, he is asked, are you the Messiah, the son of the blessed one? Jesus said, I am. Again, the priests knew exactly what Jesus was claiming with this statement, which is why they reacted with such fury. The high priest tore his clothing to show his horror and said, Why do we need other witnesses? You have all heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? Guilty, they all cried. He deserves to die. On another occasion, Jesus declared, The Father and I are one. Once again, the people picked up stones to kill him. Jesus said, At my Father's direction, I have done many good works. For which one are you going to stone me? They replied, We're stoning you not for any good work, but for blasphemy. You, a mere man, claim to be God. Do you hear that? Jesus claimed to be God. That's why they wanted to kill him for blasphemy. Philip once asked Jesus to show him God. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus replied, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and yet you still don't know who I am? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So why are you asking me to show him to you? Again, the message here is Philip. Why are you asking to see the Father? God and I are one. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I've been with you this whole time. So in summary, the Bible clearly claims that Jesus was God. The disciples clearly claim that Jesus was God and he affirmed them in those statements. And then finally, Jesus himself claimed to be God. This was indeed the very reason on a human level at least, why Jesus was crucified, because he claimed to be God. To quote C.S. Lewis, I am trying here to prevent anyone saying the really foolish thing that people often say about him. I'm ready to accept Jesus as a great moral teacher, but I don't accept his claim to be God. That is the one thing we must not say. A man who was merely a man and said the sort of things Jesus said would not be a great moral teacher. He would either be a lunatic on the level with a man who says he's a poached egg, or else he would be the devil of hell. You must make your choice. Either this man was and is the son of God, or else a madman or something worse. You can shut him up for a fool, you can spit at him and kill him as a demon, or you can fall at his feet and call him Lord and God. But let us not come with any patronizing nonsense about his being a great human teacher. He has not left that open to us. He did not intend to. Okay, so since the Bible claims that he was God, since the disciples claimed that he was God, and since Jesus himself claimed that he was God, what are we to make of that original passage from the beginning of this video? Why did Jesus in that moment say that he didn't know when his return was going to be? Well, here we have to understand something about the incarnation. When Jesus came to earth, he became genuinely and legitimately human. He was still God, but he took on a genuine human body. The Bible says that in that process of becoming human, Jesus voluntarily emptied himself of his godly rights and privileges. In Philippians we read, though he was God, and take note that's another clear verse from the Bible that says he was indeed God. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. So though Jesus was God, he did not cling to equality with God, that is the Father, but instead he emptied himself of his divine privileges to come to earth as a humble human being. And while here on earth, he actually took on the role of God's servant. Now, as a human being, that means that Jesus had all the same experiences that we do on earth, and he had them to the same degree. He experienced hunger, tiredness, sadness, distress. He had a full human experience while he was here on earth. And therefore, that means that he can relate to us when we experience those things. He's gone through them too. And as a human being, 
emptied of his divine privileges, he therefore relied on the Father for instruction and leading the whole time that he was here on earth. And Jesus implied this often. He said, the Son only does what he sees the Father doing. Whatever the Father does, the Son also does. So Jesus, while on earth, was simply keeping his eyes fixed on the Father and simply carrying out what the Father said and did in complete obedience. He took on the role of a servant. I think you always have to be careful in this situation because if you emphasize Jesus' humanity, you can sometimes lose sight of his divinity. And if you emphasize his divinity, you can sometimes lose sight of his humanity. But Jesus was fully God. He had a quality with God, but he emptied himself voluntarily to take on human form. And in that position of relative vulnerability and weakness, he then relied on leading from God the whole time that he was here. And that explains why in that moment, Jesus said he didn't know when his return was going to be. The disciples wanted to know, and Jesus looked at the Father, and the Father said, no, don't tell them. I, I don't want that information to be known. I don't want that information in the Bible. I'm going to keep that information for myself. Now, there are good reasons as to why God should not have revealed a date, but that's for another video. But essentially, that's why Jesus said he didn't know in that moment anyway. In that moment, he had limited himself or emptied himself voluntarily of his divine privileges because of the incarnation. Oh.